Okay. I think last time we had something pretty similar to this. Now I had to make a new project because I just installed the Norton 360 5.0. And when I went to run a when I went when I went to run a compile a code, my Norton actually blocked this code saying it was highly dangerous and uh, it deleted a lot of the files in my project. And it was really frustrating. But I finally figured out what was going on and I changed the settings. I mean, but it's kind of annoying, so I made a new one, and uh, <clears throat> we're gonna still gonna continue off with the race here. So we already learned from the last video that um, we can put any number in here, like we can by selecting a variable, we'd we'd be able to put basically any value in here, and they're all initialized to zero here. We already saw the initialization here, and I can even uh, you know, I mean, you probably had figured this out, but I can even put in a uh, Rand, let's say, mod 10. Now remember the 10, Rand mod 10 is going to always output a random number from 0 to 9. The Rand mod 10 is, let's say it's going to equal 99. So a random one, a random bin is going to be 10 through 9. Now notice that uh, only bins through 0 through 9 exist, so this random does exist always between these bounds here. If I made it a random mod 11 here, there is a possible error. There's a small chance that my program will crash. But I don't want to. I want to say 10 or less. Random mod 10 or random mod 8 would work. So random mod 10 would work here. So it would just be a random bin. One of them is going to be equal to 99. In this case, it's bin number two. Because it goes from 0, 1, 2. In this case, it's a. Nine, eight, seven, six, bin number five. Right? Nine, eight, seven, six, five. And it's just, you know, there's just other things, you know. I mean, we can we can basically put any integer type in here that we'd like. So let's just uh, let's move on here. Now let's say uh, in this loop here. We say we have a bin of count is equal to a rand. Let's say it's a mod 1000 here. Okay. Now, after that, we'll just output the bins. I don't know why I deleted them. Bin. It's early in the morning. i got to run a little bit. Bin mod uh, uh yeah so all right so it just outputs these random numbers here you know they're just random from zero to one thousand or zero to nine ninety nine excuse me. So, so these are random numbers from 0 to 999. Now what we can do here, now let's say count is equal to 1 here. Now I just want to show you a new technique here, but it's involving. Uh, here, let's say I have a maximum value and a min here. So let's say uh, that the first bin, bin of 0 here, the first bin, is going to equal to rand mod 1000. Okay? Then max is equal to bin of 0. And then min is equal to bin of 0. Now there's another way to initial. Alright. So we got that here. So our maximum is going to equal to our first one, and our minimum is going to equal to the first one because we only have one data value. So this is just kind of an initialization thing. Then count is going to equal one, so then it's going to finish off the rest of it going through here. But right here, and then we can say if bin of count is a uh, let's say it's greater than our max. So if this is bigger than our current max value here, we set our max 
equal to the bin of that particular count. And then we can say if the bin of the count here is less than our minimum here, it will be the same thing. We can say min is equal to bin of the count. Now finally, before we run this here, and we'll trace this carefully, then we'll then we'll be done. Because I gotta go. And I think this is a good tutorial to just to be showing you this, uh because it's a it's supposed to be, it was supposed to be short and sweet anyway. So minimum is gonna be min and max is gonna be max. Now let's see what happens when we run this here. Okay, so if we look at this here, we see if we look at all these data values here, we saw that the smallest one's gonna be sixty one and the biggest one's gonna be eight fifty nine. And if we run it again here, we see if we look at all these the computer can the code that we wrote would be the smallest would be fifty three, the largest would be seven sixty three. And it keeps on taking these here. One thirty four and nine ninety eight. In this case, it's 108 and 951. So far, uh, the mat and minimum max have always been at the beginning or the end. It could be somewhere in the middle, couldn't they? Yeah, here's one. Yeah, where the smallest ones happens to be somewhere in the middle, and the largest one happens to be somewhere in the middle. Notice that all the other ones happen to be at the beginning or the end. It's kind of weird. 818 and 37. Yeah. So, all right. <coughs> so what this does here. First, we have to somehow initialize our minimum and maximum value over here. Well, and that's why our first data value had to be outside this loop. When we receive our first data value here, the min and the max are going to be exactly the same because it's, there's only one piece here. Now, when we go to the next one here, when we get our next piece here, we're going to see if it's bigger than the maximum. If it's bigger than the maximum, then that's our new max. It's a new record, so... And this is vice versa here. If it's smaller than our minimum here, it's, it's going to be our new minimum. So we change the minimum value only if that if that particular value is smaller than the original than the previous minimum. And then it'll just keep on tracking here. So first we, we pick a random number here between a thousand. Then we see if that random number is bigger than our first maximum. If it is. Hey, let me run a sample here. So our first, uh, our max and minimum is initialized is is actually equal to 173. Both of them for right now here. Assuming that we start from here. Now we go to this next loop. Okay. And then we get number 72 here. We'll see. We'll now wait. So now this random number here happens to be 72. So is 72 greater than our max? This is false. So our max still equals 173 for right now. But is it smaller than our minimum? Well, our minimum is also 173. So that's a true. So our, our minimum is now 73 or 72. I'm sorry. I'm gonna go to our next one. So we, we uh, output this to the screen, we print it out. Then we go back to here and it's still true. Then we see is our then we get seven six eighty six here. Well a seven eighty six greater than our max, it is, because our max is one seventy three. So now our max is gonna be seven eighty six for now. Then we see if it's smaller than our minimum, it's not smaller than our minimum because our minimum is seventy two. Then we keep on going and then it changes the max keeps on changing throughout that so that's another thing we can do <clears throat> and it doesn't really have to involve random numbers here we can get these data values from files 
I was just using random numbers here just to show you how we can make this work. But that's just another thing, and um, we'll uh, we'll finish up. I'll, we'll we'll go over array. Well, there's a little bit more on arrays that I want to show you, so we'll go over arrays one more time, and then uh, we'll come back to them throughout other tutorials. So that'll just be our last thing on arrays, and we'll we'll see where we go next. Okay.